Between 2005 and 2011, an unassuming kit accessory became a topic of fierce debate in British football. To some, it was a necessary part of playing through European winters, and comforting to those not used to the harsh climate. To others, it was self-indulgent, and something which needed to be eradicated from the sport as quickly as possible. This is the story of what happened to the snood. A snood is just a neck warmer, often fur or fleece lined, and beginning in 2005, they started to appear on Premier League pitches, with players wearing them during the winter months of the season. Carlos Tevez was probably the most notable wearer, but Yaya Torre, Mario Balotelli, and Samir Nasri were all often spotted in them, as well as many others. And as is always the case with football's items du jour, snoods were soon being spotted on Fiverr side and Sunday League pitches, and school playgrounds too. They seemed harmless enough, and yet as had happened when football players had begun to wear gloves during games, and sometimes outside of winter, the snood faced a steady beat of opposition from pundits and in the media. Paul Ince, the player-turned-coach, at the time managing Notts County, said that he was sick and tired of seeing players, even when it's mild weather, wearing tights and these snoods around their necks. It's not right. Rio Ferdinand, at the time still an active player, promised on Twitter that nobody would ever see a Manchester United player wearing a snood, while Roy Keane, who had by that point retired, accused players who wore snoods of going soft. Perhaps most damningly of all, Alex Ferguson was scathing and was reported by local media as having said that real men don't wear things like that. So the quote proper football men didn't care much for the snood. But that was just on aesthetic grounds. Elsewhere, Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger was happy to argue in its favour, saying that he supported the snood on the advice of his medical team and that, after suffering neck injuries, a few of his players had found the garment useful. Then Chelsea head coach Carlo Ancelotti was fine with them too. Ban them, he said? No, it's cold. But ultimately, there was another discussion underway, one about safety, that would ultimately lead to the banishing of the item. In February 2011, FIFA expressed concern, wondering aloud that there may be a safety issue. If a player was running through on goal and that opponent grabbed his snood, that could pose a danger to his neck. It would become an item high on the agenda when the International Football Association Board met at Celtic Manor in Wales at the beginning of March 2011 to discuss revisions to the game's laws. And to the surprise of nobody, the snood was banned. Then FIFA President Sepp Blatter said on leaving the meeting that the decision had been unanimous and that a snood is not part of the equipment and it can be dangerous even like hanging somebody. There was not even a discussion because this is not part of the uniform. It was much to the delight of the British press, including the Mail on Sunday, who had, in their own words, led the way in exposing the Premier League's posers with a campaign, and had delighted in having named and shamed the fashion victims who made club shop managers happy, but only added to the questionable image of some of the game's most recognisable stars. And that was the end of the snood never to be seen on a Premier League pitch again. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.